This is case 2017-0714 TSNA Motors LLC DBA Kia Summersworth versus Kia Motors America Inc. The record should reflect that Justice Bassett is disqualified from this case. Mr. Gordon. May it please the court. I'm Joshua Gordon. I represent Kia of Summersworth. Its proprietor, Sam Yapur, is here today in the courtroom, and I've reserved two minutes for rebuttal. For Kia, I'm sure Mr. Yapur is probably a frustrating business partner, and ultimately Kia may find other grounds to terminate. But, and Summersworth concedes uh, that it was understaffed and undertrained, and that it never cured the breach. This case, however, is merely procedural concerning a legislative procedural choice. The statute requires that the manufacturer first acquired knowledge of the breach not more than 180 days before Doesn't notification. Doesn't your interpretation countenance a breach in perpetuity? Maybe so. Uh, it, and it is, the, it is incumbent on the manufacturer to do something about that breach early in it, or at least within the first 180 days, and work with the dealer if they're going to, or then go through with the termination if they're not. And that is a reasonable legislative choice because the alternative is that the, uh, is that the manufacturer can pick any arbitrary date it wants in, a, in the context of a continuing breach. So it's, it's a- Well, of course, but isn't the answer to that, don't, don't continue to breach, and, and then you won't have to worry about that. Well, that, that's, but that's not the facts of this case, obviously, right? Um, but, but the statute doesn't contain any of the exceptions which the board, the court, or the manufacturer would read into it. There's no critical breach provision. There's no last straw trigger. Uh, there's no decree, discrete daily violation sorts but of clause. can't you have different definitions of breach, i.e. inadequate staffing versus complete lack of staffing? Could those be separate breaches? Uh, but they're not. The, the, um, there was no complete lack of staffing until after notification, essentially irrelevant. There was inadequate staffing right along. And I think, it's hard to tell from the record, but I think there was two out of the required six employees the entire time. Now, they're, they're, the, the identities of them evolved over time, but, but there was always fewer than six. So, and there were the, the complete lack of staffing didn't occur till, till really after the facts of this case. So once there's inadequate staffing, one of six or five of six or whatever, then that's, that's the breach. And that's the breach that Kia had to act on. That's a material breach. Okay, so yes. regardless of whether it ebbs and flows, that's it. That's it, that's it, Your Honor. Can I just ask you, Mr. Gordon, if the, in other words, you basically say, well, the, the statute doesn't contain any language about sort of a continuing violation. And I agree that it's true. But this, the general statute of limitations doesn't have a uh, three-year statute of limitations, for example. It has a discovery rule, but it doesn't have any continuing violation uh, language. But I think we've had cases, not only this court, but around the country that says if something is a continuing, ongoing thing that the statute of limitations isn't triggered, you know, at the first time it starts to run. It can be triggered from sort of the last act of some kind of wrongdoing. Well, that may be true in a statute of limitations case, but we have language here that's very specific. You know, it's 180 days from the they, you well, first but it's sort of knowledge. intended to be a, a, a statute of limitations kind of thing, isn't it? No, I think it's, the, it's, almost, it's almost the opposite of a statute of limitations. It's, it's, it's designed to eliminate from the consideration something that's waived or uh, something that's tolerated or something that's, that's cured, um, you know, a, a stale breach. Um, and we don't have that here, but we have a, a tolerated or a... Uh, we, I, I, probably a tolerated breach is probably what we have here, or something, or just negligence. It was just Kia was just dilatory. But the language here is very different from a statute of limitations because it is it's 180 days from first acquired actual or constructive knowledge. It's not a um, it, it's not a general statute of limitations. It's very specific and it's not ambiguous. It means the earliest time when you knew, and the earliest time when Kia knew was a long, long time ago. And Kia would rewrite the statute to delete the phrase first knowledge 
or why? substitute that phrase with something like whenever, I guess. Why would it be, or give me the policy justification for a tolerated breach to avoid termination? Like how long could that go on? Or uh, what uh, policy is the legislature trying to, I get stale breach, but tolerated breach. So they're working and it just never gets any better. What's the policy behind allowing that to mm -hmm. continue? Well, but the legislature chose a sort of a, a, a notice up and cure kind of procedural regime. And, uh, and, and from the date of notice to the date a dealer gets terminated, there's three statutory months to cure. And so there's a, it, it's, a, it's a notice up and cure regime. And that date of cure can be extended. It can be extended, the cases show us, a long, long time. And so it's a, it's a reasonable legislative choice. And the other, the alternative legislative choice, which I think Kia is advocating, is sort of this, they could just pick an arbitrary date during the, during the, the continuing breach. Breach, and that is, well, it's just arbitrary. And, and so the, the legislature made a reasonable procedural But isn't, a, isn't a, a more reasonable interpretation of this is that what the statute was aimed at is the situation where there's a discrete breach and it then ends and it's corrected and uh, it, the, the, it, this is designed to ensure that, that Kia, the, the, the national company, can't come back later after it's cured more than, you know, more than six months after it's cured and say, hey, wait a minute, you know, you, you guys did this a year ago, yeah. um, uh, even though it's been cured. But if it's ongoing, I guess I don't see why it makes sense to say that, you know, if you let it, if, I mean, it, it seems to me it, it would encourage a sort of adversarial relationship that, uh, because, because if they don't, if they don't sort of, you know, come right after you immediately, then arguably they've waived it. Well, obviously the easy case is a discrete violation that happened at a certain time and it either, either gets tolerated or, or goes away or what have you. And an ongoing breach is maybe the legislature didn't think of it, which seems doubtful to me. Or this is the way, they, uh, this is the, way the legislature, legislature, through its pretty clear language, I think, decided to deal with it. And it does encourage some level of adversarialness between a dealer and, its, and a manufacturer. But that's the, that if, if you have an ongoing breach, maybe it's a little bit adversarial anyway. And that's the solution, is to terminate and then and allow the at least three months statutorily and maybe a long, much longer time to cure if the parties look like they're getting toward that and let them settle that if that's what happens. But it's a reasonable legislative choice. It's not, it, 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 it's not absurd like has been alleged. It's, it's a reasonable choice. And, um, uh, but, but, and it's not that this would penalize or punish a manufacturer for, for forbearance, because maybe this wasn't forbearance. Maybe it was tolerance, or maybe it was just neglect. Uh, the, the regional manager uh, changed in the interim. Um, when when, Kia, when, when uh, Summersworth first was a Kia dealer, the brand wasn't uh, that great a brand, and it was a, um, uh, they were happy to have a loyal dealer, and when Kia got to be a better car. So, but, but I mean, but let's, just, let's take one of your examples. Suppose that this is, you know, the regional manager of Kia is like, you know, is asleep at the switch and, uh, you know, finds out about this but doesn't take any action and it, you know, drags on and what, uh, for beyond the six months. Now we're saying that sort of Kia is, Kia should be stuck with that? I mean, now that's just, so now they find out that the regional manager is asleep at the switch, they fire him or her, and now somebody else wants to say, wait a minute, we can't, we got to stop this. You would say, no, it's too bad you... This is a, this is a, a national company with four lawyers just here today, they know, they, they know how to track their days. And I don't think that's a, um, a, a problem with a national manufacturer like that. Well, how do you address the argument that he is making that the final notice was the real notice of termination, that the prior notices all had to do with trying to make initiatives to get your client back on board and in compliance with the agreement, but the no real notice that matters is the last one that was given where it clearly says, notice of intent to terminate. And, and I'm not sure I understand the question. Well, how do you respond to that? If, that's, if, if we read notification as a clear notification to terminate, he is in compliance. 
for the 108 days. Yes, in 2014, there was a clear notice to terminate. But there were, in the years preceding that, there were the complaints and uh, you know, threats, really, to terminate right along on the exact same issue. And I don't think it can be said that it was a different issue. It's, it's training and staffing, and those things are closely related in this case, but it's training and staffing. If you look at uh, letter number three in December 21, 2011, they go through the training problems and then they go through the staffing problems, and that's exactly the same issue in the notice to terminate in, in 2014. It's the, it's the same issue right along, and Kia tolerated it or something for that time, and unfortunately they're stuck with this dealer unless they find another way. You're, to you're interpreting it. notification of, of, as notification of a violation of agreement as opposed to notification of a termination or intent to terminate, right? It's a, the, the statute says first knowledge of failure, first knowledge of failure, so it's a first knowledge of breach, and that doesn't mean that the, the initial uh, it doesn't say anything about how the, the manufacturer has to express its knowledge. It just is, the, the day it's counted from is from first knowledge. Do they have to express it at all? Pardon me? Do they have to express it at all to the dealer? For example, the February alleged discovery of no staff at all. Do they have to say, okay, this is it, last straw. You have no staff. We've been complaining about inadequate staff, but now it's no staff. Does that have to be conveyed to the dealer before uh, it can no, be relied on? No, there's no statutory requirement. I think in the Motor Vehicle Industry Board, then the proof would be difficult to make of when first knowledge it would be you know, in people's heads rather than what we have here is pieces of paper. But I think that's the only difference. Thank you, Your Honor. Huh? Several things. Um, I think that the manufacturer's argument is predicated on or dependent upon that there was a cure in the interim. And there was no cure. From 2011 or 2009 or something like that, they were always understaffed. So it's not like they were it was cured sometime and then it reappeared later. Um, but the, could that be considered, I guess, a waiver, though, of those prior notifications such that the manufacturer would have had to have raised a new one within 180 days before terminating? Well, there was no new one. It's the, it was the same one all along. And I, I think that's the, if Kia had cured the problem in 2011 and then done it, did it again, mm -hmm. I, I think this argument makes sense. But this was, there was never, there's no evidence of cure at any time. There's no finding of cure at any time. And um, in, in Kia's I think his 2014 notice that Justice Donovan uh, suggested, uh, noted, is that they, that, that Kia said there had been a breach over an extended period. Over an extended period is their, is their words. There was never a cure. Um, I want to talk about, for a moment, about the such failure. And, and I, I don't quite, I can't quite repeat the words that my, my sister said, but the such failure is, and, and, the, and the statute is in front of you, such failure to comply. And so the failure that I've, that I've italicized in both places is the same failure. It's the failure to comply. It's not some other failure that, that, that I don't know how to say. Um, third and finally, I understand many jurisdictions, probably most, have decided opposite to what I'm saying. But New Hampshire law is New Hampshire law, and this court is charged with interpreting New Hampshire legislature. Thank you, Ron. Thank you, counsel. Case submitted. The court will take a brief recess.